there was this great idea that we could get, you know, like maybe a two, three hour sort of mini campaign. Well, that was the original plan. Not quite what happened, but since we pretty much ended up making a full game. The game gets more and more uh, ambitious, and then next thing you know, it's, it's not like anything you've worked on before. We knew that we wanted to keep what was great, that people loved about the Halo experience, that 30 seconds of fun over and over again. We knew we had it to preserve that, but at the same time, give it an ODST spin. We wanted to try something that we've never done before, and I think that means breaking the mold of what people expect from Halo. Here's an engine, here's a story, you got a year, go. One of the great challenges that we had with ODST was, uh, since we didn't want to be traveling all across the universe in this gigantic space opera, we wanted to really focus on one place. The hub was the single most technical thing that we've ever accomplished in the Halo engine. There was a lot of work done to try to come up with smart ways that we could build the city. It's definitely the biggest environment that we've that we've made in any Halo game. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out how can we how can we maximize the space without uh, freaking out all the artists. And I, I think we figured out how to maximize the space really well. Um, I, I don't think we ever figured out that that second part too well. We want the player to have this open, visceral, you're in the city experience. We started experimenting with playing with elevation, playing with building shapes. It's a city that you actually completely walk through. Each BSP is directly alongside the other BSP. You walk through a door and you go into the other BSP. The road structure is not straight, it's diagonal, it's also multi-layered. I don't think we kind of realized how big the city would get. We basically had to build very specific tech that would give uh, the AI the right type of behavior. We had uh, the technology we called it uh, Squad Patrol. No matter where you were inside the hub, there would always be a certain amount of noise, a certain amount of enemy presence there that we could ratchet up and ratchet down depending on what we needed it to do. We need to have this dark, moody city without making it unplayable. I wanted to get a feeling of rain at night in an abandoned city. I would still like to score the emotions and mood that we want the player to feel when they're playing the game. We want people to explore the city. We want people to find this, you know, this kind of hidden little sub-story. What if the phones rang? You're alone, you're in the city, you're trying to unravel a mystery. That's, that's the feeling you have every time you're the rookie. What's fun about being an ODST? How's he different than the Master Chief? What kind of problems does he face versus the Chief? If they're not the, the walking tank, they really have to pick up weapons that they're gonna use. There were things that we added. The silenced submachine gun and the silenced pistol are absolutely the best tools for the job something the ODSTs have that Spartans actually don't. Sounds weapons at night, they feel cool, they look awesome. They're really sweet to use. In real life, silenced weapons don't have a whole lot of sound. So we had to kind of Hollywood them up a little bit. Kind of make it so that they sounded like they were, they were silenced and supposed to be silenced, but yet still powerful and fun to fight with. In a lot of ways it feels like Halo 1, because there's back to single wielding. Dual wielding. Paul doesn't like dual wielding, so we cut it. <laughs> Visor mode is uh, really cool, and it evolved a lot. There were versions that looked really great for the art, but yeah, maybe they didn't do such great things for the design. It affected how we lit something. We'd make this building, and it, it looked great, and we, th we thought it was fine. And you turn on the visor mode, and you realize that's really just a square. But it also has the advantage of really showcasing the depth of our scenes put on visor mode and then the whole environment reveals its secrets to you. You know what sucks about big cities? You can get lost really quick and that's where we came up with ideas for the visor database where you have a great map of the city that not only shows you where you are but allows you to choose where you want to go. If you don't have that tool to help you 
navigate the city, you're never going to find the high action flashback scenes, which we were banking on to be the core fun of the game. It's a very simple idea. It was, a, it was an amazing struggle to get there. When you combine those things that we took away with things that we added, such as the visor, even though you might feel a bit more vulnerable, you have the right tools for the job. The hardest part moving from Halo 3 to ODST was just the, the difference in the play styles of the characters. If you look at the Master Chief in the course of the Halo games, he became ridiculously powerful over time. And ODST feels very different because when you start taking fire, you can't just continually keep kicking ass. You have to actually look for cover because you don't have a motion tracker like the Chief. Bringing back the health was something that was born out of a discussion about how can we add long-term level of tension to the game. For us, health is important in the ODST's world because it reminds you that you're vulnerable. We want to experience the story through the eyes of many different characters. We wanted to bring back the guys from Firefly again, Nathan Fillion, Adam Baldwin, and Alan Tudyk, trying to find the, the perfect film noir blonde. We thought about Trisha Helfer. Orders are orders. Come on, Veronica. What could be more important than that carrier? My orders. And Buck? Call me Captain. I'll pass on that dance, but you can't show me where to sit. These little scenes, we wanted to have their own mystery. It was the story of one guy, one object, one high action moment. And for us, the clue objects were the key. Dutch, we need to get above this crap. Link with the B net. One of our drones must have seen where they hit. When you find a clue, you're actually going back in time and playing in the boots from another ODST's perspective. Good hunting, boys. I'm keeping my boots on the ground. You've got five main characters. Banshees! Each of the characters have things to say from first person. Not only ground you in the character, but also give you some really useful tactical information about the battlefield. It's coming to drop in behind us. They must know this is our rally point. Where the heck did these buggers come from? Underground tunnels are filled with the dead men. We got ammo and weapons on the high ground. Move it, move it. Without spending a lot of effort personalizing each of those characters, then it wouldn't mean as much when you step into their boots. We need some help! Look out! Bam, said the lady. So I hope it's the right balance of new and old that it, it doesn't come off um, like we're like we uh, screwed the pooch on this one. But I, I do think they will probably walk away from this honestly wanting more. <laughs> honestly, if we if we had more time to do ODST, I really don't know what we would do differently. So if I got another two weeks, I don't know. I guess I'd play more ODST.